Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of basically the Forge Energy series. So today what we're going to be doing is adding a battery. So I have a couple different uh, blocks in this particular workspace that um, show progress bars for how full the battery actually is on the side of the block. And there is only a couple procedures that we need to uh, add depending on how we set up the one in Tales of Biomes. So this will vary, um, but the procedures and stuff will be pretty much the same way structured. So we'll cover that today. Um, if you haven't watched the last episode, then I basically fixed some of the Forge Energy uh, issues with um, basically something called... Um, Forge Flow, which is a system that I designed that uh, can help with the flow direction. So we'll be integrating that into the actual system. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is actually import the textures from the workspace that I had. Eventually, I'll go ahead and update the textures again once we um, once this series is over, but uh, the right now what we need to do is we need to go to the M creator and then I'm going to open up the project files, textures, and then in devices there are the devices, uh, the connections and stuff for this particular battery. So I'm going to select those and that's where they're going to import. We have our little progress bar sides and then our end piece and then our indicating logo for what that particular device is. So. Once we've done that, what we can do is we can go ahead and create the battery stages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a block. So we're going to create a block and we're going to call this one a, we'll just call it, I don't know what we used for the cables. I think it was copper. I can't remember. Uh, let's see here, forge cables, uh, low capacity cable. Yeah, it's copper. So we're going to go with copper. So copper battery. And we're going to go copper battery. And we'll do um, zero for, well, well, our default stage will be off. So what we're going to do is, or not off, but like, uh, zero. So what we want to do is make sure that there is some sort of indication of what stage it is. So we're going to make sure that it's stage zero because this is going to be our default battery. All right. So then what we need to do is we need to set up the connections. So uh, there's a couple ways that we can do that. So these are the east and west sides, um, these two right here, and then the south and north side. So this would be north and this would be south. We have our up and down. So depending on how we want to set it up, we can uh, set it up a few different directions. Uh, for example, if I wanted it to rotate only on the y-axis, then we could do that. Uh, I just need to set this one right here, and we could maybe do a um, progress bar in the front. So we'll set the progress bar in the back and front, and or we could even do it on the sides. That would actually make more sense because then our connection, when we place it down, will be in the front and back, right? So. Uh, we're going to just set that up like this and then we'll set our progress bars on these sides here on the other two sides and then we'll have our icons on the top and bottom now you can set up the connections however you want uh, this will just allow me to do it a little bit easier for the um, system so basically i can set up the script now this is going to be different than the the one in here where this workspace is already set up so we're going to be like building it from scratch practically so outside of that we don't really need anything else um, configured here our hitbox is already set for the block uh, we can just clean up the name a little bit and make sure that it's on iron. Uh, that should work. I'm not sure what the other materials that we used for the generator and stuff. I can't remember. It was a little while ago. So we went with iron and copper sound. So we can do that with this one as well. So we can go with copper sound for this one. And we'll just go with copper. And we'll... Did I set up the... Yeah, it's required level 2. So we'll set that up for iron. And then did I use, yep, yeah, I used pickaxe and we require that, perfect. Uh, what's the hit point? So 2.5, I set this one to 2.5. We'll just keep it consistent. 
and then we can go to advanced properties we're going to want this to tick one every tick and then we want to make sure that it's set up for the color so i'm not sure what color i want with this one just iron so we'll go with iron so iron there we go and what about the other thing so i have it blocked and blocked for the um properties down here so we can keep that consistent as well block inventory we're going to need that we don't necessarily need the inventory for the blocks i'm just going to disable the inventory slots and basically disable those two you can keep those enabled if you want to and then we get to the forge energy so we need to check that box and i'm just going to quickly look up what the capacity for this particular block is and then we'll um get back all right so for the f connection uh type it's 64 64 and our battery capacity which is this line right here is going to be 64,000. so what we're going to do is we're going to set this to 64 one, two, three, that's 64,000. We're gonna set these to 64. And we're not gonna have in any internal energy because it's battery. We don't really need to have any energy in that by default. So uh, triggers, we're going to need a update tick. So I'm gonna actually remove the zero on this one because this is gonna be linked between all the batteries uh, for this particular one. And we're gonna create a procedure. We're gonna leave this blank for the moment. And we're going to create a block added one again, removing the zero because this will be linked to all of them. And we're going to save that as well. So those two should be set up this one and that one. And then we can go to generation and click save. So uh, we should have two procedures and um, we should have, I'm not sure why. Oh, I think I know why this is set up like that because we put it in the wrong folder. So we'll go in here and we'll put these in our battery one. So we should have our update tick and our block added as well as our first stage. So once we've done that, we can duplicate this stage. So we go copper battery one and we'll just duplicate this a few times. Um, I think I need like five stages. So two and three. And I think there's one more after this, so four. Well, let me just double check the other workspace. I'm not sure how many batteries there were. Uh, blocks, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so five. So we have five blocks here, and then we can basically go ahead and set up. Now these are all gonna be configured the same way. You don't really need to worry about the configuration of those particular ones. Now, every once you get their first stage set up, it should be fine to synchronize it, but you will want to go ahead into the properties and make sure that it drops the battery first stage and that when you create a picket, it will select the um, first stage as well. Other than that, uh, if you keep the name consistent like this it should be fine and it'll be easier for translation as well um, other than that I don't think there's anything else that you need to really worry about you just make sure that the stages from one to whatever higher for your progress bar are set up to drop that particular one so I'm going to set this up quickly and then we'll cut back in Okay, and there was one other thing that I forgot to do, and that was to update the progress bar um, icon on the side texture. So this will act as our display texture for the progress bar. So we need to make sure that we do that for all the stages. So two will be this one, and then we have our three and our four. So we'll need to set those up quickly. So we'll go three and three and then what we can do is we can go with four and four so the full progress bar here so we'll select that and then we can start working on the procedures so let's go ahead and move over to our block added so basically with this one because our textures we can close out of that solar panel now uh, with our textures, we have the connection at the front and the back. So we know that these are going to be at the south and north direction. Uh, this would be your east and your west, and then your up and down, right? So what we need to do is, because it's on the north and south, we need to make sure that we get the blocks rotation, which we can do by an easy test. 
to test if it is um, north or north or east or north or south and we can do that by um, testing if the other condition for the rotation for these blocks are either east or west so basically the other direction type because it's only northeast southwest uh, would be the east or west so we, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a uh, we're going to need one of those blocks and we're going to need the directional test thing and we're going to set this to north and we're going to get the blocks direction so we're going to need this block right here i don't know if it supports block states for when it's block when the block is added but we will use this one just to get around that just in case and then what we're going to do is we're going to go either north or south and then what we need to do is we need to set up the connections for this so if we go to the other workspace uh, we can go ahead and go into our um, procedures block added and we should have be able to see how this is all set up so this would be our north direction so we can just copy these basically and what we can do is minimize that and we'll set this up so this will be the cables uh, the F stage or uh, direction for the cable to connect so basically the copper type and the direction so we need this for north and south directions so south and these should be set to true and if they're not north or south what we need to do is set it east or west east or west or west east and west so that part is all taken care of. This is what our procedure would look like for the north and south uh, direction. So we can save that for our block added. And then what we can do is we can move on to our update tick. So this is going to be a little bit longer for the uh, video. This is like going to take up the majority of the video because this is where all the script comes in. So we're gonna be using the uh, update tick for the example and some of the templates that I've created to basically build this procedure. So um, for example, we're going to need to set up the um, might as well keep it on that one uh, for the energy system. So we're going to need to make sure that it's on server side. So it reduces the lag a little bit. And we're going to go not client side, so it's like that. And then what we can do is we can import uh, our particular procedure block. So we're going to go to the procedures, flow control. I move the timer in here as well, uh, so it's all in here. So what we need is we need the reset script. And this is going to be the first part that makes up this. If we go to the other workspace you can see this is that particular part right here make sure that this is your global variable that we set up um, if you haven't set up your global variable make sure to do that before you move on uh, we have flow forge flow down here this is the variable you'll need and needs to be on map and on uh, zero for the default timer so once it's zero what we want to do is we want to get the limiter <clears throat> the limiter in place so what we're going to do now is we're going to import the limiter and we can go back one set the limiter and this will allow us to get the script that we need for this part right here so that's all set up uh, then we have our forge connections we're going to need to set up our mbt variables so these are the directional ones um far as i think with our design here uh, with our battery and stuff uh, what we're going to need is only the north east south and west directions uh, we don't really have any connections on uh, the up or down so we don't need to worry about that but we will need to get the extender script in place so what we're going to do is we're going to get our extender and we need to task for the direction as well but we're going to set uh, we're going to import north and this will import the tags that we need as well so we're going to set our tags up here 
And these are the tags that we used for the cables. So basically this would be the cable connection. And what we need to do is we also need to make sure that uh, the block is uh, facing north or south. So basically same script as we did for the directional part. So we're gonna go with this and we're going to go ahead and set up a or direction like we did in the other one. So I'm gonna just quickly set this up and then I'll cut back in. All right, so we have the north and south direction set up. Then we can put our original script onto here and that will be pretty much set up for the north and south direction. But we are going to need to import some other variables. Um, for example, we're going to need to import Actually, know what? We can't test for the north or south direction, just if there is the north direction. Actually, we, we will need to do the north and south because if it's rotated the other direction, then we want to make sure that it can go that way as well. So what we would want to do is set up our south direction. So this would be um, put above here. We can just keep all our variables at the top here. So this would be north for our south direction here, and then we can connect that up. And then we're going to want to connect up uh, this. So we're gonna just remove that part and then drop this down over here so we can test our directional part. So if it's north or south, and then we can test for the direction here. So basically this will allow us to um, push out energy from both directions. Uh, if the flow control is less than that particular value. So basically, um, if the flow is coming from one direction, then it will only go out the other side, which is perfect. Uh, we should have only two connections for a battery, so one input and one output. That would be the best solution when you're actually making a battery like this. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to go ahead and just add a else if con condition on both of these because we need to test for if the direction is east. So we're gonna delete this old script and we're going to set if it is west or east and we're going to add this to the other one as well. And what we need to do now is import our east and we're just gonna plop this one on one of these. We're gonna put that over here and put that on here, delete that if statement, and we're gonna put this variable at the top here. So this can go here, and then what we can do is we can import our west direction. So west will be down here, and then what we want to do is move all this up so we get to the direction up here. We're gonna drop that down and put this on and then what we can do is we can go ahead and delete that if statement and put east in here, so perfect. All right, so that's the uh, flow control part all set up. Uh, basically what it's doing is we're testing if the direction is east or west and or north and south, so all those particular directions. And we're going to be using this as our first side and this as our second side. So basically we'll alternate between the two because we have one east and west and one north and south on each one of these. So it will automatically do it for either or um, based on the rotation. So it doesn't really matter if it's east or west or all that, it's going to be calculated based on the rotation and it will automatically know. Uh, that will work with our current setup for the battery rotation. So because it's the north and south, we know that it's going to be either this one and this one or this one and this one. So that's basically why I've done it that way. All right, so the next part of the script, let's take a look at that. Uh, we can open up our update tick. This is basically what we did just now. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we need to test for the energy. So if the energy is a certain amount, and then what we need to do is make sure that we can send that amount of energy. Now, this could be, this could vary depending on how you set up your cables. So what we're gonna do, because we're gonna have one input and one output, right? So we only really need to test if the energy is um, a certain amount, uh, like 64, if it can send that amount and then send what it can. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create an if statement right below this line. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our energy and, f uh, energy and fluid and then get energy a block. We can leave the all any 
direction on. We're going to test if it is equal to or greater than 64. And then what we need to do is our energy script. So basically our energy script will vary dep depending on how we set it up. But uh, the gist of it is we're going to test for the direction. So basically the exact same condition that we had up here. And what we're doing is we're going to test if the flow direction and all the other stuff that we tested up here. So it's basically the exact same script. You could even uh, call this in, I guess, if you really wanted to. And um, then we're going to test the send for the direction for that particular one. So we need to do that for all the directions. So if we go back to our workspace, we can go ahead and actually copy this over. And we'll copy the other one as well. Just minimize this. So it's a little easier for me to move. And we can minimize those as well. We don't need those visible at the moment. So move those up here. Put those in our condition. And we can expand these. We can delete this script in the if statements. Because we are going to be running our energy script. So with that being said, our directions, these ones right here, uh, this will be the opposite direction. So this is north and this would be west. So north, west, south, and east. Actually, that's down. I don't know why that's down. Um, did I get the wrong one in? Maybe I got the wrong one in. Yeah, that should be west. I'll make sure to update that template because I think I might have saved it wrong. Uh, west, that should be, yeah. Oh, this is, this is going east. So plus X plus one is east. This should be west. So west, um, I'm just reading the, the code. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have to fix that one up. I think this is the east direction. So I'll have to check that in. All right, so let's go ahead and create a variable. We'll call this one send. And we can set it to a number variable. This will allow us to get a local variable for sending. And we're going to need to test if we have the right amount of energy for all of these. So basically, if we can send uh, up to 64. So what I need to do is basically go ahead and test if uh the direction of that block for the other direction so basically if we can send 64 because that's how much we have available that's why we tested for 64 up here and we're going to test if the direction south of this block with the coordinates facing north so if the facing if the block north is can support energy facing the block that we're currently at which is south uh, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, send our send amount. And we're going to set the coordinates for that block. So we need to make sure that this is set up. And we're going to make sure that the direction is also set up for that direction. And then we need to extract that energy. Because basically send just means it's going to add that energy, where extract means we need to extract that amount, right? So we're going to extract what we basically sent from the current direction. So this will be extracting from the current block, and that's going to be sending the same amount over from what we get from this value. All right, so we need to do that for all the other directions as well. So we're going to just copy that over, and then we can update these variables. So this will be our west direction and we need to set this up for the face facing east and we can move these down and I will basically just show you how to set up the other one so this one needs to be east and we'll need to set the direction for our west direction so west 
and the face being east. So I'm going to do that for the other two and then we'll pretty much done. All right, so there's just one last part that we need to set up and that's the progress bar script. So what we're going to do is we're going to, when it basically goes ahead and uh, what we want to do is outside of this condition, uh, in our condition for our, f um, actually we would probably want this outside of even that condition because we want to make sure Okay, flow control if it's greater than zero. Um, yeah, we could actually keep it in that condition. That would be fine. So as long as it's in our second if con condition, this one right here, then we could basically run this script. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a if statement right here outside of these parts. So again, this will be our energy script here. And that's our script for the flow control. And then what we have is our basically our progress bar script. So we want to test um, basically a variable. Um, if the variable, we're going to pass this over to capacity, which is going to basically get how much the block can basically send. So we need another local variable. And we're going to set that to capacity number. And then what we can do is we can grab that variable over here by default it will be send we'll set it to capacity and then i need to go ahead and basically get the capacity divided by how many stages that we have so in total we have five stages so what we want to do is we want to basically divide this by the amount so we'll go to forge energy and then we'll get the energy capacity of the block of the current block and then what we need to do is we need to divide that by five so we're going to go ahead and divide that by five put that there and then we can create a few different conditions for our different progress bars so we're going to add four of these and then an else statement for basically our last display now if all these other conditions are false then what we want to do is basically return an empty state so basically that's what i've done over in the other workspace if I'm sure yeah so we've returned an empty state and then we've tested for the conditions for these parts here so uh, for what we need to do uh, we need to set up our um, condition for an and statement because we're going to be testing for a range between these two things and we need to test if the blocks are equal to or less than so equal to or greater than and less than uh, we can go with equal to or or less than for this one uh, but we need to change the this one down here for something lower so we'll just say maybe keep it consistent we'll just say greater than and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our capacity is our capacity equal to or greater than and then what we want is to get our different uh, values so basically uh, our capacity will be our divided by five and then we can multiply that by two to get our second value so basically what we can do is we can go and grab um, I just need to see that one more time so capacity equal to or greater than our capacity and we need to get our um, energy for the block so energy equal to or greater than our capacity and then what we need to do is basically multiply that by two so that would give us two values of that and then we can do that for the other one so this would be multiplied by two and times three and then this one will be obviously three and four and the last one will be five or four and five so basically what we're going to get up to is this will be the full capacity and this will be our four direction so now we just need to make sure that those blocks are added so replaced so we're going to make sure that the mbt is checked and our keep our state as well and we're going to set our progress bar so this will be our first one and this will be our second one and this will be our third one 
and that should be our fourth. I think I did that right. Two, that should be three, and that should be four. And then the bottom one should be the empty one. So if you've done it right, what we have is our capacity divided by five, and then we're testing for a range for each one of these, for the ones with the progress bars. And we're gonna update the, the progress, the block for that pro particular pro progress bar. Um, this part right here is our energy script, which will allow us to transfer the energy based on the two directions that we have. And up here is basically our script that we're using to get the flow control and allow it to pass over to a specific direction. And then we have our limiter and our update uh, for the reset script, which will allow us to reset the variable for the current block. So that's basically how the cables work, very similar, um, minus the, you know the, some of the other components, but basically the same idea. So we can go ahead and save this, and then we can make sure that all the other blocks have the same procedures. I just want to double check this. Yes, they do, so that's good. We can go in game now and test this. Alrighty then, so we're in game now, and we can go ahead and grab our Forge Energy blocks, which should be down here. Now, if you're going to add your battery, I suggest disabling the Creative tab for all the other stages, just so you have your empty battery here. I forgot to do that, so we should probably do that in just a second, but uh, I'll do that after the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to place down our cables, and I just want to make sure that the cable can basically get the direction. So we're going to put our cable like that to our battery and we're going to go ahead and connect that up and then we're going to put a couple cables on this side. Now what we should start to see is the energy to fill fill up if I did everything correctly. So we're going to just double check our data, get, and then we're going to get the block here. And we're going to get the current block and uh, we have energy storage of 64 and we can see the progress bar is slowly increasing. So we've set it all up correctly. It's passing through, which is perfect. And it's not going back into the main cable. So you can see that it's filling up quite fast. And we could even, if we wanted to, put another battery like that. And then this will fill up over time as well. So this is already at the full capacity. It should be climbing up to the full block at just a second so we can start to see this one start filling up now and you can do that along a line and it will work just pretty much the same way as a cable and if we do it the other direction as well so if we do it this way then it will start to fill up this way as well so we'll just give it a second and we can see um, it fill up now this will work for each direction as you can see the progress bar is going in so we can connect our basically our devices and stuff up to batteries or whatever we want and it will connect over time. So hopefully that uh, helps explain how to make a battery. Um, it's not too complicated when you understand the basics of Forge Energy. Hopefully this, by now you'll kind of have a general idea of how the energy system works. Uh, next, next video what we're going to be doing is making a machine. So a machine to basically dig a straight well down. Uh, to bedrock. So that will uh, be a little bit more different than you know, the the two devices that we created already as it really just actually uses the energy. So we'll be kind of integrating that into our machine itself. So definitely tune in next week for that. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.